uh, welcome to this class. Uh, in a, now, uh, what are the process for growing this silicon dioxide? Um, we have taught, uh, we have uh, seen that there can be two ways of uh, uh, depositing or growing silicon dioxide onto silicon wafer. The first way is uh, thermal oxidation and uh, the second way is uh, to go for uh, CVD techniques. Now, we are talking about thermal oxidation. Thermal oxidation, uh, there are further two processes. One is called dry oxidation and next is called wet oxidation. Again, why we are, we are learning uh, the silicon dioxide is because we want to see a chip that can be integrated onto biomedical systems of which we will do mathematical modeling and we will try to fit the data. If the model is good, the data, that experimental data that we get will fit well, right. So, with that purpose, we are looking at the uh, steps that are required to fabricate a device. Now, uh, uh, having said that, uh, like I said, we have dry oxidation, we have wet oxidation. So, what is dry oxidation and what is wet oxidation? You see, if you have a silicon wafer and if you uh, uh, heat the silicon wafer and, and pass oxygen, then the oxygen would react with silicon to form silicon dioxide, very simple right, Si plus O2 gives SiO2 at a high temperature. Second is wet oxidation, Si plus H2O gives SiO2 plus 2H2. If you have to balance the equation, then Si plus uh, 2H2O gives SiO2 plus 2H2. So, this hydrogen as a gas will uh, uh, come out uh, and you will grow the silicon dioxide. Both has its pros and cons. Uh, so, what I am telling you here, you can see that uh, uh, dry oxidation, you have silicon plus oxygen. Uh, reacting at high temperature giving you silicon dioxide, wet, wet oxidation you have silicon uh, which is solid silicon. So, bracket is S, uh, water vapor is gaseous. So, it is G and then you get SiO2 plus 2 H2 is not it. So, this is how uh, it is done. Now, if I see the uh, temperature you can see that both 900 degrees centigrade and 1200 degrees centigrade uh, in between this range. Uh, you can you can deposit or you can grow the uh, oxide and wet, wet oxidation is about 10 times faster compared to dry oxidation all right so dry oxidation another uh, limitation is that you can have a thin layer of oxide about 0.05 to 0.5 micron however it is an excellent insulator and for the gate oxide for for students who understand the mosfet right uh, mosfet is a transistor and you have let's say uh, n plus n plus you have a gate layer right you give gate oxide layer this thin layer of gate oxide that you talk about it is it is grown using dry oxidation process okay is grown using dry oxidation process and then on that you have a gate right you here you also you have oxide so everywhere is protected with oxide is oxide here and then you have you have to open the contact uh, to uh, get your source and to your drain and this is your gate right so for source and drain you open the silicon dioxide from a window in silicon dioxide. This window is open using photolithography process that we will see in some time. This is your gate, this is your source, this is your drain, gate source drain. This is your thin layer of SiO2 and this thin layer of SiO2 should be an excellent insulator and we use dry oxidation for the same. So, uh, that is for gate oxide, this is what it means uh, and then you, you have to have uh, wet oxide where wet oxide you can grow a thick layer of oxide. However, it is a good insulator for fill oxide or masking, but it is not used for the uh, gate oxide. So, wet oxide cannot, we do not use it for gate oxide, but it can be used for filled oxides or masking oxide. So, room temperature oxide uh, also creates a like an, uh, if you put silicon in air, it also creates a native oxide and the thickness of the native oxide is about 1 to 2 nanometer. Uh, it is an poor insulator and uh, whenever you start the process, you have to remove this oxide by dipping the wafer in HF. HF is hydrofluoric acid. Hydrofluoric acid is the agent for silicon dioxide. That is why we dip the wafer in uh, HF. Uh, for about a uh, few uh, seconds to remove the native oxide before we start the process. Even new silicon wafer would have a native oxide if kept in air. So, that is the reason of uh, removing the native oxide. We do not use native oxide for, for any process, all right. So, this is the uh, volume expansion if you want to see how it works then uh, it is 2.2 times uh, uh, 2.2 x which is equal to 1 by 0.46. So, silicon dioxide if you see it has a comprehensive stress and whenever you uh, fabricate a device like piezo resistor or piezo resistive cantilever uh, to compensate this comp compressive stress you have to grow silicon nitride on the back side of the wafer. What I mean, what I mean is if you have uh, the cantilever 
cantilever is a silicon wafer right. So, here the cantilever uh, if you deposit silicon dioxide it will have a stress compressive stress and to uh, compensate the stress on the back side of the wafer you grow a silicon nitride or deposit a silicon nitride. Uh, so, that is what I was telling about the compressive stress that is created by because of the silicon dioxide material. Now, <coughs> If you want to grow silicon dioxide again there are three different techniques first one is dry oxidation second one is wet oxidation but there is third one which is called pyogenic oxidation. So, let us see one by one the first one that I am sh uh, showing you on the schematic if you see the schematic uh, then you have a oxygen you have a nitrogen you have this is a furnace and this is called a horizontal tube furnace horizontal tube furnace ok horizontal tube furnace temperature is about 1100 degree centigrade and uh, th uh, when you load the wafer you can see here it is shown like you have a slot onto each slot you are loading a wafer all right and uh, this is quads so, it is a very high melting point you can you can load the wafer onto this and load the uh, entire 25 wafers you generally you get a set of 25 wafers all the way in all the way into the for horizontal tube furnace. Now, how does it work? How does it work? You can see here there is a oxygen and nitrogen right oxygen and nitrogen. So, initially when you load the wafer when you load this entire wafers into the horizontal tube furnace the oxygen wall is switched off and nitrogen valve is switched on that means you are loading the wafer in the presence of nitrogen. So, there is no reaction there is no formation of oxide onto silicon wafer. Then once you are we have once you have loaded the wafer in, uh, into the furnace uh, and the temperature is also optimized 1100 I told you right it is between 900 and 1100 degree centigrade right. So, suppose I want to uh, grow oxide as 1100 degree centigrade now also it depends on not only temperature, but also the time right longer the time thicker the oxide longer the time thicker the oxide. So, uh, uh, first initially I will start uh, or open the nitrogen valve close the oxygen valve right and then once the wafer is loaded and the temperature is reached we will close nitrogen valve and open oxygen valve. So, now oxygen is flowing into this furnace and reacting with silicon. So, silicon plus O2 gives silicon dioxide right dry oxidation. Now, you see the second schematic ok this is the first one second one and third one. So, for the second schematic what you see here is that you have a uh, heating mantle this is a heating mantle and uh, that is nothing but the heater this is called a bubbler in which you have a water water and when you heat the water it, uh, it it becomes water vapor right and there is generation of water vapor. Now, what you do initially when you load the wafer you keep this valve off this valve off this valve open and nitrogen open oxygen close you can see oxygen is closed valve that goes in into the bubbler and that comes out of the bubbler is closed valve that directly goes to the furnace is open and nitrogen valve is open then you load the furnace or then you load the wafers into the furnace. Next step is when the wafer is loaded your temperature is uh, reached right oxygen temperature is reached then what you do you now close the wall this wall open the wall that goes in the bubbler open the wall that goes out of the bubbler uh, close nitrogen wall open oxygen wall. So, what will happen oxygen will go here it will enter through here it will carry out the water vapor and it will reach to the furnace. So, when this happens then you have silicon plus H 2 O gives you S I O 2 plus H 2 right, but you have to balance this equation. So, if you have 2 H 2 O then this equation gets balanced right otherwise you cannot form silicon dioxide. So, uh, silicon dioxide uh, this is in gaseous form this is solid this is again solid and this is gas right. So, this uh, 2 H 2 will will come out of the furnace and there is a growth of silicon dioxide onto silicon wafer. The third step which is called pyogenic oxidation in this what we do if you see the third step third schematic you will see that uh, there is a uh, uh, connection for oxygen connection for H 2 and connection for N 2 nitrogen oxygen hydrogen. Now, 
what you do in this case is uh, you initially initially open the N2 keep N2 valve open close oxygen valve and close hydrogen valve H2 and O2 valve is closed then N2 is opened and in the presence of nitrogen the wafer is loaded once the wafer is loaded into the furnace and it reaches its optimum temperature then what you do you open H2 and O2 and close nitrogen if I open H2 and O2 then H2 will be here O2 will come from here react with H2 to form H2O and will uh, enter the furnace as a vapor and this vapor will form the silicon dioxide. So, uh, in this all three cases the wet oxidation using H2 and O2 is more popular and cleaner than H2O vapor. So, this particular process is much more cleaner. However, generally we use wet oxidation because it is faster and dry oxidation because it is a very good insulator. You can see that this is how the horizontal tube furnace looks like there is a multiple uh, zone temperature control that means that if you see here and if I draw the plot then I will have first zone then I have second zone and third zone one zone second and third all three zones can be independently controlled uh, at a different temperature all right that is called a three tube horizontal tube furnace with multiple zone control. So, tube one can be loaded here second will be here and third will be here three tube that is why three tube you can also have single tube horizontal tube furnace and uh, multiple zone multi zone temperature control I told you zone 1, 2, 3 is zone within that same tube. So, in this tube also you have 3 zones in this one also and in this one also ok all 3 tubes have 3 zones to be controlled. Then you have a vertical tube furnace which is shown here the popular one is a horizontal tube furnace rather than vertical tube furnace. Here you can very clearly see that uh, the uh, quartz tube is used silicon rod is used to push the plate inside and uh, the tubular reactor is of uh, glass or quartz heated by resistant and then you can see that the uh, operator is uh, loading the wafer inside this uh, horizontal tube furnace the temperature is about 1100 degrees centigrade you can see it is all heated uh, uh, mantle right and then you are loading this uh, uh, wafer set of wafers silicon wafers inside this horizontal tube furnace. Uh, then, so the steps if you see what are the steps first step is wafer pushed in with nitrogen gas right I told you that one second is oxidation process between 900 to 1100 degree centigrade with flow of either oxygen which is dioxidation or water vapor which is wet oxidation and the wafers are then taken out again in the presence of nitrogen. Now, once you have the wafer let us say if I have a silicon wafer and I say that I have grown 1 micron silicon dioxide because the silicon wafer you kept it in this format right in the inside the horizontal tube if oxygen is there oxygen will react here and oxygen reacts on the back side of the wafer that is why when you show the cross section of the silicon wafer which is oxidized silicon wafer you have to show that the oxide is on the both sides right silicon dioxide on front side silicon dioxide is on the back side and the silicon is a substrate. Now, I want to know whether the silicon dioxide suppose I say that it is 1 micrometer how you know it is 1 micrometer it can be 0.1 it can be 0.5 it can be 1.5 how you know that it is 1 micrometer. So, there are two ways of measuring it uh, uh, and one crude way the first one is uh, the surface profilometer. So, as you can see here there is a stylus stylus is generally made up of diamond and it will move across the steps of the wafer that means that I if I take this wafer and I have to perform a photolithography that I will teach you uh, uh, in the in the, in, the, in the next class as a part of uh, the uh, experiments. So, you take silicon and then you have silicon dioxide and you create a step like this ok silicon silicon dioxide you create a step this step is created using process called photolithography photolithography right photolithography. So, here when you load the stylus and you move the stylus in this way what will happen that when the stylus moves here right there is a corresponding change in the voltage. So, you can see here that when the stylus is moving right it, it is a traveling stage stylus is moving in this direction as there is stylus moves from here to here there is a change in this step right because of this step change you can you can easily see that what is the thickness of the uh, step in the UI UI is a user, user interface. 
So, uh, the way to create is uh, of course, lithography I told you uh, and then there is another method which is little bit crude method in which you can just look at the color and uh, because the uh, silicon dioxide is transparent in nature. So, whenever you incident a light it will reflect back depending on the thickness of the uh, oxide you will have the constructive interference uh, uh, can be given by k lambda by 2 n by n can be 0 0.1.46 k can be 1 2 3. Uh, so, based on that you based on the thickness you can differ differentiate what is the thickness of silicon dioxide sorry based on the color you can differentiate right from you can hear 1000 uh, uh, micron uh, my nanometer means 1 micrometer 1 micrometer silicon wafer should look something like this compared to a wafer which is about 500 nanometer it will have some pet, pet, uh, some uh, visible light in this particular uh, intensity or, or color you will be able to see. So, depending on the thickness uh, the color of the silicon dioxide on silicon would change. Uh, again, uh, this is uh, just uh, uh, understanding silicon dioxide versus silicon nitride, uh, how the thickness uh, varying thickness will change the color uh, that we can observe. Uh, in, in reality, uh, uh, like I said, this is very crude method and you have to be a super expert to understand what is the thickness to be very precise. However, uh, in, in, in reality, the color based on the uh, color this film thickness can be uh, right from the uh, 500 all the way to 9900 and you can see that change in the color uh, from brown, dark violet, royal blue all the way to orange. There is another technique which is called an ellipsometer and here the optical thickness measurement can be done uh, for the film which are transparent in nature alright because the light has to pass through it and it can reflect back. So, uh, the uh, it is very accurate in particular uh, about 1 nanometer uh, accuracy is there and uh, then there is a light source there is a detector in between there is a filter polarizer quarter wave and uh, the, the the advantage of this is, is it is a non destructive method to uh, measure the thickness of the silicon dioxide. Uh, so, next point after this one I want to I want to take care is uh, lithography ok. And what is photolithography uh, we will see in the next lecture uh, you just uh, go through this particular slides and see that how we can grow silicon dioxide what are the technique to grow silicon dioxide and what are the measurement uh, characterization techniques to uh, measure the thickness of silicon dioxide right. So, after this let us see uh, the lithography process uh, in the next class till then you take care I will see you next class.